Hey everyone, it's Amy Nakos. I hope you're doing awesome. I'm here today to talk to you about the short-term rental regulation landscape in Summit County unincorporated areas. So this video, it might be a little bit long, uh, and it's only going to apply to areas that are in Summit County unincorporated. So it doesn't apply to the towns of Breckenridge, Frisco, Dillon, Keystone, Blue River, or Silverthorne. It also does not apply to the areas of Keystone and Copper since those are not being regulated with short-term rental restrictions. So this video specifically and, and this conversation is about areas um, that include Peak 7, Summit Cove, Wilderness, Dillon Valley, and um, some Silverthorne areas north of Silverthorne, so Summit County Unincorporated. Okay, so let's go back in time a little bit, back to May of 2022. Right now, it's January 26th of 23. And in May of 2022, the Board of County Commissioners took up the issue of short-term rental regulations. And in a surprise move to the entire real estate industry and probably to anybody who was watching, they just decided to do a moratorium on short-term rental licenses. So all of a sudden in this meeting, they say, you know what? No one can even apply for a license or get a license for nine months while they figure out what they're going to do. Well, I have stories about that, but some people got caught in this, right? Some people who didn't have their septic pumped couldn't get a license. They were waiting just to have their septic pump. Can't get a license. So all of a sudden, nine months of waiting. Up until November of 2022, so May to November, people were hopeful that maybe the county commissioners would think about if they're going to put caps on these neighborhoods, caps on the number of licenses, that they might do it above the existing number of short-term rental licenses, leave some room for growth, not create an, a, a lack um, of, you know, a feeling of lack where people are gonna rush to get a short-term rental license, not affect the housing market where it's going to crash the housing market. However, in November, they came out with their first draft of what their recommendations were going to be. And now they say it's after much discussion and they've really studied it, but there's been zero studies done about what about the methodology or the effects or the needs for this to be done. Instead, they just sort of picked some numbers. All of the caps that they recommended in November are much lower than the existing licenses that are issued. What does that mean? That means that people who thought, oh, in February, when they open up the licenses again, we'll get a license. And I'm telling you that is not the case. I'll get into that in just a minute. So in November, they set these caps. Um, lots of public feedback, lots of information sent to them. The caps have remained the same. The Peak 7 neighborhood has coalesced and has tried to get them to um, put Peak 7 back in a resort zone instead of a neighborhood zone. So Peak 7 would be treated like a Keystone or a Copper where there wouldn't be any um, short-term rental license restrictions. That They're not buying that. They're keeping it as a neighborhood zone as far as we know right now. Um, but let's talk about the cap numbers that they did. So um, all of this, I have included my articles in the link below so you can see the actual numbers. I'm going to talk a little higher level. What I did is they're talking about percentages and none of that translates into real life to people. Oh, 10%, 15%, 20%. What does that actually mean? What does that actually mean for property owners in that neighborhood. So after the November meeting, I did an analysis and I said, let's just, let's see if we are, if the sales of the last 12 months were to apply to the next 12 months, how long would it take for the very first short-term rental license to become available? How many properties have to sell that have a license that will then relinquish it to get to the next to the next homeowner who's waiting for one. Well, using 2022 numbers, 
because I've, I've done these numbers a few different times. It's in all my reports, but let's just use 2022 sales as an example. Now, the first half of 2022 was gangbusters. The second half kind of slow. So is this going to be an accurate year? I don't know. I think 23 is going to have less sales than 22. So I imagine that these numbers are actually going to be higher and also for other reasons that I will discuss in a minute. But here we go. If we use 2022 numbers, sales. The lower blue basin, I'm referencing a screen up here, lower blue basin, Wilderness and Silverthorne, the very first short-term rental license to become available will be 6.33 years. Snake River Basin, Dillon Valley Summit Cove, 17.21 years. 17.21. 10 Mile Basin, which is Frisco. 10 Mile Basin also has copper. Copper's exempt. So this is Frisco, unincorporated, not very many properties. But if you want to get a short-term rental license in Frisco Unincorporated, 21.75 years, 21 years. You could have a baby and that baby would be in college before you get your short-term rental license. Upper Blue Basin, Breckenridge, 7.19 years. So I sent this information to the Board of County Commissioners. I sent it to the press. I sent it to the uh, editorial board of the Summit Daily News crickets, crickets. Nobody called me to follow up on this. Nobody wanted to understand my methodology, which I explained in, in high detail. So that led me to believe, wait a minute, do they, do they just not care that these caps that they're putting on these neighborhoods are going to cause a wait time anywhere from 6.3 to 21.75 years? In the next meeting where uh, Jessica Potter, who's a staff member of the county, presents to the countywide planning commissioners, there's a new column added to this chart that they have. And the new column indicates when the county anticipates that a short-term rental license will become available. So according to the county, um, lower blue and upper blue basins, the first short-term rental license might become available in 2025. So that to me is two years, two to three years. Mine is six or seven years. And then they say in Snake River and 10 Mile, it'll be the year 2030, which is seven years from now, seven to eight years, because we're in January of 23. And um, I have 17 or 21 years. Their analysis is based upon the prior history of people who give up their short-term rental licenses. They just relinquish them. If you're going to assume that anybody is going to relinquish a short-term rental license in this environment when they have to wait six to 21 years, you are wrong. They're gonna hold on to those licenses. So I think their numbers are wrong, but they're not having a conversation with me about my numbers. So I think you can expect that um, that's how long you would need to wait when these caps get put in place. So, Tuesday was the first reading of their ordinance. Despite the fact that um, the commissioners received 250 emails in one day, despite the fact that the room was packed with people, they passed this first reading with no public comment. So, but they say that's, that's customary. In that conversation, in their conversation about the first reading, um, a brand new element came out of thin air. So sort of like the May of 2022, when we're just going to do a moratorium and that was a shock to the community. What? You're doing a moratorium? What? We thought you were just having a conversation about short-term rental regulations. Instead, they put a moratorium on it. Nobody can get a license. Um, out of the blue, where the conversation was supposed to be, do these rental licenses should they be capped at 135 nights or would they consider 180 nights? So that's been the messaging that's been going out as, as the real estate community and the short-term rental community were talking about it. They were saying, well, you know, 180 would obviously be better because it gives uh, more opportunity for people to actually use this license. In the first reading or prior to the first reading, the number 26 bookings comes up. So we're not talking about nights anymore. Elizabeth Lawrence says, well, Palm Desert or Palm Springs does capped it at 26 bookings. We should do that. 
And somehow that's now the conversation, 26 bookings instead of the number of nights. I, 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 I'm not clear why. Maybe they think it's easier to regulate or easier to monitor. So that is a crazy, crazy thought. What you're doing now is creating a situation where people who are going to rent their properties are going to require longer nightly requirements. They're not gonna take one or two night bookings, maybe not even three night bookings. So the people who are looking for those shorter time frames will have less opportunity to come to Summit County and spend their money. But that's what's on the table. Okay, next steps, here we go. If this is something that is affecting you, that is something that you're interested in, like I said, I've published my articles below, but we also, you also have the opportunity to make public comment on February 15th, which is the second reading of this ordinance. If you um, want to send in written comments prior, I have included the emails for the county commissioners. I've also included an email for um, our representative, Julie McCluskey, and um, contact for the press if that's something that you want to do. I encourage you, if this is an important issue to you, if you are a proponent of property rights, if you have a property in these areas where the, these regulations will definitely, definitely reduce your property values, um, please make your voice known and we'll do our best to um, hopefully do what we can to quell the amount of regulation that's coming down the pike with, with the Board of County Commissioners. So. Also, if you want more specific information or you want to know uh, what's going on in the other jurisdictions, you can always feel free to reach out to me. I do have a lot of resources on my website and articles, but I would love to um, help educate you and get you up to speed and talk about it. So thank you for your patience and watching my video and we'll, we'll see you soon. Bye.